Well, good afternoon, y'all. I'll tell you the story of uh, when I went to Oklahoma. <clears throat> now, this happened, oh gosh, oh, how many years ago? I think I was in my 30s, late 30s, mid to late 30s. And I had been living at Dad's house. And, <clears throat> and I just took a notion I wanted to go see Uncle Bill. And he was living at that time in Oklahoma with my cousin, Billy Bob Shane. Uh... Billy Bob, he went up there for a job many years ago, and he just stayed there, and he's been working for the same outfit for, oh gosh, 100 years now. And uh, him and Uncle Bill were close. Now, Bill, uh, Billy Bob is uh, Uncle Bill's youngest son. Is he the youngest or the oldest? Well, he might be the oldest, huh? I don't know. He's one of Uncle Bill's sons. Uncle Bill has uh, two sons. I guess two, I don't know. One daughter. But uh, I don't know. We, we, we never saw or I never saw the other two, because they, they was always living somewhere else. But anyway, Uncle Bill lived there, Bill Shane. Billy Bob, I always called him Billy Bob Shane. <laughs> These are some roses I made, I just wanted to show you. This is one of them you crochet out a long thing, and then you roll it up together like that, you roll it round and round and it makes it rose. Those, these are tricky trying to sew them together after you roll them up. Uh, but they do make pretty ones. And these are these that made different. Came out real pretty. I like these. I like them. Real simple. And uh, I'm just in the mood to make some roses. But I'll tell you. Anyway, I, I wanted to go and visit with Uncle Bill, so I got on the Greyhound, or anyway, I got up there. Got up there. And uh, was it Oklahoma City? It might have been, because it was real close to that town called Moore, I think. Well, anyway, it was in the summertime. Oh, I'll tell you something else. The poison ivy and poison oak is growing like a plague. It has been for many years now, all in central Texas. Now, I don't know about East Texas. It probably is. And I'm very allergic to poison, poison ivy. And I got it on me one time there at Dad's house and had it on me for about 10 months trying to get rid of it, put calamine lotion on it and I'd bathe with Dawn dish soap. I'd bathe with bleach. I, I tried everything I could think of, and it just would not go away. Finally, I went to an emergency room in a hospital, and I said, man, I need help with this. And, they, and the doctor prescribed me some steroids and something else. I don't know what it was, and that dried it up. That's the only way I could get rid of it. Dang, they drove me crazy. There was poison ivy growing in different spots all over Dad's property. I mean, it's everywhere. Everywhere. <clears throat> like a plague. And uh, now, poison oak, it'll, it bothers me some, but I can get rid of it with the calamine, but the poison ivy, I uh, forget it. But anyway, anyway, I noticed on my way up there to Oklahoma. All the way up there, I noticed looking out the windows, just looking, observing. Poison ivy and poison oak growing all over the ding-dong place, everywhere. 
Well, I got there to that town and uh, walk around in that town anywhere you go, right in town. Poison ivy and poison oak growing up the trees and growing up the sides of the buildings and people just walk past you like it's nothing. Like, uh, and I'm like, my God, how can people live like that? I don't know. I guess it's going to take over like uh, like the kudzu vines over in the southeast. My God, I'd much rather have the kudzu vines. You can eat them. You can eat kudzu vines. And your livestock can eat it too. It's, it's healthy. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind if you go to starving because of the, the crazy people of the world. Anyway... Um, anyway, I got up there to, to their house, and just, I visited there about oh, two, three weeks, and, and while I was there, there was a tornado. Mm-hmm. Me and Uncle Bill stood out there on the front porch and watched it coming. Here it comes, you just see that thing just, whoosh, and we watched it went across uh, the interstate, an interstate highway, and it went across there, and there was a, a Greyhound bus, and it turned it over. It went across that highway, went on up, it veered on up in the, towards in the town. And uh, later on, we heard that it did, did some damage to a, a car place of some kind, some kind of a, just different businesses. And we, and also it had gone through that moor, Oklahoma, destroyed a brick bank and did I don't know what all. And if that was something, you're standing out there watching it. But thank God it didn't come near us. But another thing I was going to mention about Oklahoma is that the people. I met one person there that was real nice and friendly, one. She seemed like a normal person. She was real friendly. Everybody else I met, man, woman there, stuck up, weird acting, act like there's um, just kind of, I don't know, paranoid or suspicious of everybody. You're just not friendly at all. Just, if you speak to somebody, they'll either walk past you, not speak, or else they'll just look at you. Uh, and just walk off and not speak to you. Just, just as unfriendly and rude. Man, that's rude. I tell you, I wouldn't want to live in Oklahoma for nothing in this world because they're stuck up rude people. And there were very few that are friendly. I don't know how they stand it. My my cousin. Billy Bob, he's friendly. I don't know how he stands it. My Uncle Bill didn't stay there for real long. He came back to West Texas. He he had uh, West Texas in his blood, just like I do. <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to tell you that little story. Um, and if y'all have a story you want to share with me, feel free. I'd be glad to hear about it. Just tell me all about it. Talk to y'all later. Bye.